In this video today, we're going to look at growth of populations, population growth, and how populations can grow depending on a number of other environmental factors, including other living things. Limiting factors are going to be things that will limit the population from growing extensively. And these are based off of something called abiotic or biotic factors. A biotic factor is a living organism uh, contained within the environment, some other living thing. Biotic means uh, living. In biology, we study, uh, the li we study living things, and so biotic, similar meaning. Abiotic means without life, and so an abiotic factor is a non-living factor of the environment, like water or sunlight, temperature, or other nutrients uh, within the environments that are going to interact with living things. And so biotic and abiotic uh, factors or things in the environment can influence how a population grows. And they're often essential, whether it's a living thing or a non-living thing, a biotic or abiotic, they are essential to, to allow a population to continue to grow. Regardless of the type of organism, whether it be a plant or an animal or even bacteria, there's always going to be something, some factor, whether it be a biotic or abiotic, that limits how big the population can get. Um, and so we're going to take a look at how populations can grow a little bit in two different forms. The first is called logistic population growth. And populations grow logistically when the resources are limited. Um, uh, logistic uh, results in this S curve shape here of how the population grows where we see very few individuals and then there's a, a rapid increase and then it kind of levels off here. Um, and this level leveling off creates what we call an S curve graph. Excuse me. Um, and this is what we most oftentimes see when there's very few individuals in the population. We see a very small number, and as a result of that, there's lots and lots of resources for all of the organisms to obtain. And so as there's plentiful resources for all the individuals, the population grows very quickly, which is why we see this line increase. And then eventually there becomes so many individuals, there's not enough resources for all of the individuals in the population. And so the population growth uh, levels out. It doesn't continue to increase because there's just simply not enough resources for all of the organisms. The second type, type of population growth that we're going to look at is called exponential population growth. And this is when pa um, populations uh, grow exponentially, uh, when resources are abundant or there's lots and lots of resources. Um, it could also be a situation with, in which organisms uh, recently immigrated in, into a particular area. And this shape that is seen on the graph here is called a J curve because it kind of looks like a J. And that population just continually increases because there's plentiful resources. There's an unlimited amount of resources. And uh, the exponential growth doesn't mean that it's like growing by two every time, but it's increasing at a much, much faster rate in which the population size is doubling each time, um, not just adding two each time. So it grows really, really quickly. And if we compare this J curve back to our logistic growth, we can kind of see there is a portion within logistic growth where there is a, a, a bit of a steep increase or an exponential increase, kind of like the J curve, but that population size levels out as we previously talked about. And so when we put this to uh, both of these together, um, the maximum size of a population is what we call a carrying capacity. And so this would be like what we saw the leveling out in the um, logistic growth uh, with the S curve in that the population increases at the beginning because there's plenty of resources for all of the individuals. So we see a population increase, 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 but then eventually there's too many individuals and there's not enough resources. And so unfortunately, some of them are going to die, which is what this little drop in the population line is showing. But then because there's enough resources for individuals in the in the environment, it increases, the population size increases, and then drops again. And there's kind of this up, down, up, down pattern until it levels or balances out about the carrying capacity. So the carrying capacity is uh, essentially the maximum size the pop of a population that um, can be supported given its environmental factors. Uh, in this example, um, in measure uh, growing yeast, on a, a petri dish or a, an auger dish that contains uh, auger, the bacteria are going to quickly increase, or yeast in this case, are going to quickly increase because there's plenty of resources. 
but then eventually the one of the limiting resources would be space as well as um, nutrients to be able to grow and so that population size will level off because it's reached its carrying capacity to finish up for today we want to look at how populations are distributed and depending on resources and their interactions with both biotic and abiotic um, factors within the environment there's a couple different ways that species can be distributed even is when they're evenly spaced uh, due to limiting factors here in this example we see the trees spaced out pretty evenly uh, in order to ensure that they won't have sunlight but also and probably in this situation more dependent on water clumped is when there's many individuals around a central resource and they tend to stick together um, also found in species that cooperate with one another, like wolves, for example. Humans oftentimes represent clumped uh, because we congregate around cities. And then random is the last of the three, and in random there's no pattern. Um, and species are found at great, um, uh, found in species that are great at outcompeting others. So for example, non-native species that we'll talk more about in the spring. And so these are the three different ways that populations are organized or arranged, even, clumped, and random. And just to see, kind of um, take a guess at these, you can see here's some other examples. Here, this would be pretty evenly distributed. Um, here's going to be random. And then the, the last one here is uh, clumped together. So that is some information uh, and explanation for how populations can grow, um, looking at logistic and exponential growth, and then also ways that populations can be distributed through clump even and random.